nuclear physics questions, especially ones about these decay equations, then they do need to be money in the bag. They do need to be quite easy questions for you because they're easy to pick up quite a lot of marks quite quickly. So let's have. Hi, yeah, I'm running through this, which is an OCR gateway, the second higher paper, which they call paper four. And this is a radioactivity or nuclear physics question. The first one is quite a straightforward kind of um, nuclear equations, nuclear decay equations question. But the second part is actually a six marker, a quality of written communication one. And it's quite a tricky calculation within that quality of written communication one about half-life. So make sure you go through this one thoroughly. Okay, so let's have a little go from it. You need to complete this equation essentially okay so um, what it is about is just about making things balance okay so 220 take away 4 is going to be 216 this is the mass number and we've lost 4 mass so our new isotope has 4 less mass and you can actually see that pattern and you can use what they've already done to check that so that one should be an easy easy mark next one here well okay I don't know what's gone this way but I do know the numbers, uh, 212, so top line balance basically, and bottom line balance, 212 take away zero, that's 212 as well. 282 take away minus one is 83. So there's 83 protons in this, 83 protons in this atom. What is that then, or what is the radioactive particle that has zero mass and minus one charge well that's a beta so that's a beta sign don't put a b put a beta sign start from the tail essentially you could put a little e for an electron sign if you wanted to okay so there is obviously just a mark for each one of those in this case then um, carbon is an element and it has six protons so everything every single carbon has six protons you need to complete this for carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14 isotopes so, well, look which number is it the bigger one or the lower, the little one that goes on the top line? It's the bigger number, okay, the mass number, and the number after the carbon refers to the mass. But carbon always has six protons, so its atomic number is always six. Essentially, just a mark for each line. So, a mark for the right mass numbers and a mark for the right proton numbers or atomic numbers in chemistry you probably call them atomic numbers in physics let's call them proton numbers so we don't forget that okay next question here and notice the little asterisk tells us it's a level of response marked question and so there is space to write and it's worth six marks on the other page um, so let's think about what we're going to write as we read it and then we'll go ahead and do the writing carbon 14 is a radioactive isotope produced by the in the atmosphere by cosmic rays, it's taken in by trees as they grow. When trees die, they stop taking in carbon-14. The carbon-14 already in the trees decays. So this is why it's useful as a way of dating ancient things, because there is always, every single living thing has the same number, uh, same ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5.7 times 10 to the 3 years, and it's used to find the age of ancient trees. Two scientists collect information about living and ancient trees. They examine the same size sample so this data is from the same size sample from each tree so there's a living tree so um, in how many grams of carbon 14 in the same size sample 1.95 and it's living so it's not dead uh, this is an ancient tree and it's got less carbon 14 it's got much less actually this is another ancient tree and it's got less but not as less as B <laughs> they have different conclusions about the data so scientist one scientist one says tree C is the oldest as there's more carbon 14 left than scientist Two says tree B is the oldest, and he actually says, or they actually say, it's twice the age of tree C. Uh, this is the question then. Use the data to, to evaluate the conclusions made by the two scientists and use the data to determine the ages since the death of trees B and C. So here's our two paragraphs. Now, I must admit, this is not the way around I would do it. I'd probably use the data to determine the ages first and then use that to evaluate the uh, conclusions made. So there's my two paragraphs. So I'm going to go back to that and to try and work out the ages since the death of trees B and C. I'm definitely going to get some marks from that if they if they <laughs> if they have specifically told me that I need to use the data to term, determine the ages. Then I need to do that. There's definitely going to be some marks for that. So let's go ahead and do that now. Why this question was not done very well is I think because. 
the way it's written as this long bit of data, this weird kind of idea of rather than just calculate the half-life of these things and say which one's the oldest and say who's correct, they've decided to give you some uh, conclusions and say evaluate those conclusions. So say who's right and who's wrong and why. So firstly though, let's go ahead and use the data and I can do this here, guys, I don't need to um, I don't need to put it necessarily in the box, we will check this as examiners. Okay, so let's have a little go at this. So that's the half-life, okay, that many years. I need to work out how many half-lives have passed since it was alive, since the tree was alive. So the half-life is the time taken for the mass of a certain sample to half. So how many times has it halved for to get to this and then to get to this? So in my calculator, I'm just going to do 1.95 divided by 2, so what's half of it? That's the first half-life. Is it either of these? No. Divide it by two again. That's the second half-life has passed. Is it either of these? No, not quite. Divide it by two again. That's the third half-life. Is it either of these? No. So divide it by two one more time. That's the fourth half-life. Aha, uh -huh. that's basically that to two significant figures anyway. So this is four half-lifes have passed. And well, to get to the next tree, then you can see it's one more half-life has passed. So already I'm starting to think that one of these guys um, is not, or neither of these guys are fully right. This is definitely not the oldest. This is the oldest, and it's not twice the age. It's just that it's um, it's just that it's been alive. Sorry, it's just that it's been dead for this much longer. One more half-life. Now to work out the age, I need to do five times the half-life. Five times. 5.73 times 10 to the 3 gives me 2,800, sorry, 28,650. And for the next tree, I'm just going to times that by 4. So 22,920. Okay, so actually, even before I have written anything, I've got two marks here. I'm going to put this into my prose because it's a quality of written communication one, and I think that's a useful thing to do. So I'm going to open the page now. Just about to see it all on the camera, that's good. And um, now I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of what I, I have thought about. Okay, so the age of tree B makes the examiner's life easy because there it is straight away. Um, I could have, I would have got a mark if I'd have worked out how many half-lives have passed but it's better to have just done that. So now I need to go ahead and evaluate the statements of the, each scientist and I'll probably just do one and then two. So scientist one is wrong. Scientist one is wrong because tree B is the oldest Scientist 2 is partly right, but partly wrong. But he's partly wrong in that it's not twice as old. It's not twice as old, it's one half-life older. Now why, what's the mix-up they've actually made? Let's think about that. What's the mix-up that Scientist 1 has made? Well, Scientist 1 has misunderstood that they clearly think that more carbon-14 means older, which is actually, carbon-14 would have been decaying, so there'll be less carbon-14. And then why might the um, scientist B have, scientist 2, been wrong? Well, they may have misunderstood the idea of a half-life being twice as old. So that's a pretty tricky question, I must admit, okay? Uh, but. The trick with these longer written questions is always to break it down into the smaller parts and always be checking back here, have you done everything that the question asks you to do? Have you used the data to determine the ages? Yes, I have. Have you evaluated the two statements? Yes, I have. Have you used and referred to the data to explain why that is? Yes, I have. So they're going to ask you some tricky questions about Half-Life A. Eh? So I'm Kibbutz Masters of Guerrilla Physics and I hope you'll stay tuned because we're all about your understanding of physics more, therefore enjoying it more, therefore being more confident and then doing better in your exams. Thank you very much for watching.